It's a beautiful 60-something degrees, but here we are, right, ready to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. joyful noise in this house tonight. I'll praise you in the valley. I'll praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure. Oh, I'll praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered. I'll praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water, oh, my enemies drown in. Oh, as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh, my soul. still in control my praise is a weapon it's more than a sound it's more than a sound my praise is a shout that brings Jericho down as long as I'm breathing I've got a reason to praise the Lord oh my soul Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, praise cause you're sovereign, oh, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave, oh, praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I praise, praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. Praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I won't be quiet. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? Oh, and praise the Lord, oh, my soul. Hey! Let 
So who else can lead us, lead us to freedom? No one, no one, no one. And who else can heal all our sins and diseases? No one, no one, no one. Oh, who else can walk, walk on the water? No one, no one, no one. Who else can answer, answer by fire? of giants. No one, no one, no one. And who else can silence the roar of the lion? No one, no one, no one. Who else is worthy, worthy of worship? No one, no one. Oh, who else is worthy, worthy of worship? No one, no one.
Nobody like you. Oh, nobody like you. Nobody, nobody like you. Nobody like you. No one, no one knew it. No one knew it. All right, here we go. Oh, and I searched and I found nobody like Jesus. Oh, I searched and I found nobody like Jesus. Oh, I have searched and I found nobody like Jesus. I've searched and I found nobody like Jesus. Oh, say nobody, 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 nobody. Say, can nobody do me like Jesus? Can nobody do like Jesus? Can nobody do me like Jesus? Can nobody do like Jesus? Can nobody do me like Jesus? Can nobody do like Jesus? Can nobody do me like Jesus? Can nobody do There will be no other God before you. There will be no other God before you. Sing it again. Cause there will be no other God before you. Hallelujah. There will be no other God before you. Cause there is no one above you, no one beside you, nobody like you. Oh, there is no one above you, no one beside you, nobody like you. There is no one above you, no one beside you, nobody like you. Oh, there will be no other God before you. No one, no one, no one. Oh, no one, no, 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 no one, no. There is nobody great. There's nobody greater, oh. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, Father. There is none like you. Come on, lift up a shout of praise. There is none like you. There is none like you, oh. Hallelujah. We've been talking a lot about, or Charles has been talking a lot about the prodigals returning home. And this is a song that sings about just that thing. And it talks about the prodigal that came home and the father was waiting with a ring and a robe ready to bless him. And I just felt uh, tonight this is the perfect song to kind of amplify what he's been talking about and just longing for the prodigals to come home, believing that they will and ready with open arms for when they do come home. Hallelujah. This may be a song that the captives can yet sing, but if we sing long enough, they might join in with us. And this may be a dance that's too heavy for those chains, but if we dance long enough, then the prisons will open up, yeah. may be a shout that those fragile lungs can't bear but, but if we, we shout long, long enough oh, well, the walls might finally fall and they may need some help to lift their hands up in the air but, but we, we know, know that freedom's coming, coming so we'll sing it all the more we're singing oh the redeemed now have a song we'll sing it all day long till the rest come running home Oh, 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 all the broken can you hear? We'll shout it out forever. Can't wait till you make it here. We're singing. Oh, 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 
This may be a ring of a prayer to pray out loud. Would you send Getting those orphans home? We've been waiting all day long. Oh, a ringing robe is ready. We can see them coming now. Just like the prodigal. We're going to meet them in the road. We're singing, whoa. The redeemed now has a song. We'll sing it all day long. Till the rest come running home. Whoa. The broken can't you hear? We'll shout it out forever. Can't wait till you make it here. We're singing. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's sing that verse again. This may be too daring. Well, this may be too daring of a prayer. To pr Let's go. Come on, church. Would, Would you send, send those orphans home? We've been, been waiting, waiting all day long. Oh, a ringing robe is ready. Can you see them coming now? And just like the prodigal, we're going to meet them in the road. We're singing, oh, the redeemed now have a song. And we'll sing it all day long till the rest come running home. Oh, oh, the broken can't you hear? We'll shout it out forever. Can't wait till you make it here. We're singing, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. How many of y'all know he's a chain-breaking God? How many of you have had chains broken off yourself? Come on. Strongholds start to break at the sound of our voices, at the sound of our praise. Old strongholds get out of our way. Can't you see us dancing? There's no room for you to stay. Strongholds. Strongholds start to break at the sound of our voices, at the sound of our praise. Oh, mountains, get out of our way. Can you see us dancing? There's no room for you to stay. We're singing, oh, we can see it all We'll sing it all day long till the rest come running home. Oh, Lord. Broken, can't you hear? We'll shout it out forever. Can't wait till you make it here. We're singing, whoa, whoa. chains break let the chains break just like Paul and Silas mm, singing praise let those chains break oh it's chain breaking praise chain breaking praise oh it's chain breaking praise oh it's chain breaking praise a chain breaking praise. A chain breaking praise. A chain breaking praise. A chain breaking praise. Oh, we're waiting. We're singing. Uh, we're singing. Welcome home. We can see them coming now. Oh, we say welcome. Just 
us the drums. Come on, let's sing it, church. Welcome, welcome home. Cause there's a ring and a robe. Oh, there's a ring and a robe. We sing it. Welcome, welcome home. You don't even have to be cleaned up. Even have to be oh, cleaned up. We see where. Oh, where? Welcome home. There's a ring in the room. Yeah. There's a ring in the room. Oh, welcome home. Oh, we see where. Welcome home, welcome oh, home, welcome home. Welcome home. Oh, oh. We can see them coming now. We With can the see rain. them coming now. Oh, welcome home. How are we doing tonight, church? going to be an amazing night of breakthrough and deliverance tonight. We have Pastor Landon in the house. Everyone give him a warm welcome. And we are so blessed. We get Pastor Landon twice in the next week. We also get him here for our three-day intensive, March 21st through the 23rd. If you guys haven't registered for this yet, make sure to do so. Spots are filling up very, very quickly. You can do that going to unitymovementusa.org. And you guys, I just love the song that you just played because, as you said, it fits the theme. We are starting our Return of the Prodigal series this Sunday. Hallelujah. We want to see all of the prodigals coming back home, and that includes everyone for you and your household shall be saved. Yes, hallelujah. On April 21st, we are actually going to be having a night of prayer for household salvation at the Hub, and it's going to be available on Zoom, Zoom only, at 6.30 p.m. And so if you haven't registered for it yet, make sure to do so using the QR code in the back. And actually, when you register, you can submit the names of your prodigals. And what we are going to do is we're going to build an altar up here and we are going to pray over all of the prodigal's names, all of the prodigal's pictures that night. And we are going to see household salvation in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Also, upcoming in this next couple of weeks is Easter. And we are having so much fun planning what is going to be our Easter week. We are going to have our Palm Sunday here at the Hub, Good Friday. And we are going to have our Easter Sunday, and it is our first Easter here at the Hub. So for more information about that, we have a short video to play. Hello there, everyone. Pastor Charles Karuko here, the lead pastor here at the Hub. We're going to have our first Easter services here at the Hub. And I want you to bring your friends and your family for the Palm Sunday on Sunday morning, 10 a.m., on March 24. Then we're going to have our Easter services beginning on Good Friday, March 29 at 7 p.m. right here at the Hub. And then on Sunday morning, the resurrection service at 10 a.m. We are going to have this as opportunities for you to invite your loved ones and we're going to celebrate the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's going to be an amazing thing for kids, Easter egg hunt, all the good stuff that we do for Easter to bring a lot of kids and to bring focus to Jesus Christ and sharing the message of his resurrection. We love you guys. We'll see you real soon for the Easter services.
so as we all know, Easter is a great time for outreach. So please invite your friends, invite your family members, invite people that typically don't go to church. Invite them to come here to the hub and experience the Lord on Easter week, please. We would love to see them there. And then I would love to invite up Dr. Charles this evening. Thank you, Mackenzie. We're hoping you get a baby every day. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, I got the best guy in the house tonight, and, and it's Pastor Landon, and you're going to be hearing from him shortly. But how would you like if the hub becomes a soul-winning community? Only a few people would like it. I'm going to ask again. How many would love this to be a soul-winning community? Amen. And uh, we have so many prodigals that are going to be coming home. And they are not just going to be your own sons and daughters. They're going to also be your friends' sons and daughters. And we're going to go look for them. And so, um, one of the things we're going to do, we're going to show you how to win people to Christ. Like, how to really be a soul winner. And I got one of the best soul winners I've ever met. She's a young lady. She was really small and shy the other day. But she has become a bold warrior for Jesus. She's brought over 700 and something numbers to Jesus Christ. And I want you to welcome Anne. Come up here, Anne. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. You're so little. <laughs> I am. <laughs> but Jesus in you is so big. Oh, so big. So big. <laughs> It's all him, not me. <laughs> I promise. Oh, I know it can be you. That's yeah. a lot of people. And I know you it's are a little shy. Yes. Personality-wise. Yeah. That's your mom. Your mom yes, is not shy mom. at all. No, no. I take the shyness from my dad. <laughs> How yeah. did you become that bold? Oh, my goodness. So um, I go to the river at Tampa Bay Church with Pastor Rodney Howard Brown. Come on! Woo! Hey, Rodney! <laughs> um, and so they have a school there. It's called River University. And they call it Bible Boot Camp. Like Holy Ghost, Fire, Bible Boot Camp. They just, you start, and then they're like, all right, this is the first week of school. You're going to go soul win. And I'm like, what is soul winning? <laughs> <laughs> so the church just, the school just, um, they gave me the tools that I needed. And they said, go and do it. And I was like, Oh, uh, what? And I was so scared the first time. I was like, my knees were shaking. You know, I was like, I was like, okay, has anyone ever told you God loves you? <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and eventually I just, I kept leading people to Jesus. And then the boldness came over me. And I was like, all right, let's go. And so all of a sudden I start running up to people, like before they shut their door in their car, like coming from the grocery store. I'm like, wait, 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 I have a quick question. Has anyone ever told you God loves you? And I don't know, the boldness is is all the Holy Ghost. Like, it's nothing to with me. It is all him, and I am so thankful. <laughs> I would never have imagined that I would be doing what I'm doing. Well, before you tell us about how you do it, yes. have you ever been shut out and called names and told to Absolutely. get out of here? Absolutely. Uh, how did that make <laughs> you feel? Well, they tell us... Um, like, they're rejecting Jesus because it's, it's Jesus they're rejecting. They're not rejecting me. I'm the vessel. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm the messenger. I'm the, I'm not the message, you know. And so when they say, no, no, I don't want that, then I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like, my heart actually hurts more because I know they're rejecting him and not me. Like, I'm like, why are you rejecting Jesus? He loves you so much. And I just tell them, hey, well, when you want to know, when you want to accept him into your heart, you can anytime, anywhere. Like, just say, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. You know, and they're like, whatever, you know. So sometimes it is hard to get back. And I'm like, you know what? The school tells us it's not that you, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting him. So I'm like, okay, I need to, I need to know that. So I'm not like, oh, I don't want to go do this some more, you know. So then I was like, all right, I'm just going to keep going. And the next person, I'm like, Lord, I'm asking right now for the next person that I'm going to talk to. They're going to receive you into their heart. And 100% time they do. Amen. <laughs> so, amen. <laughs> Okay, well, pretend I'm a crazy sinner. Okay. 
market okay. on the streets. I, I don't like Jesus at all. I'm, I hate church. I hate everything. Okay. Now, do what you do to people, to me. <laughs> Okay, so I just, I use what they gave us. They always say just read the script because if someone sees how short this is, they're going to most likely want to listen to it because if I'm just a person say, hey, God loves you, you know, some people are like, how, how long is this Jesus freak going to talk to me, you know? But if they see this, they're going to be like, okay, I'll just listen for like two minutes. So I hold this in my hand and I say, hey, has anyone ever told you that God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life? All right, all right. Well, God loves you so much, sir. Okay, I have another really quick but important question to ask you. If you were to die this very second, do you know for sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you go to heaven? I'll go to heaven. All right, amen. Why do you say that, sir? Because I grew up in church. All right, all right. Well, let me quickly share with you what the Holy Bible reads. So pause. Some people think that that's a good enough answer, but there are a lot of people who go to church who are not saved. They are, yeah. They're, they're deceived. So, uh, and just in case, if they do think they're saved, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to keep going with the script. I'm going to say, all right, the Holy Bible reads, I'll have sinned, come short of the glory of God. It says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible also reads, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, of the Lord shall be saved. You're whosoever, right? Of course you are. Yeah. We're all whosoever. Some people are like, what's a whosoever? I just say, okay, everybody, everybody, you know. <laughs> and then um, the next, and I flip the script and I say, I'm going to say a quick prayer for you. Some people ask, hey, can I pray for you? A lot of the times they're like, no, I don't want your prayer. Or some people are like, yes, but you don't want to ask because there are going to be those some people who are like, I don't want to don't want you to pray for me. So I tell them, I'm going to say a quick prayer for you. <laughs> and then I just say, Lord, bless my friend here and his family with a long and healthy life. Jesus, make yourself real to him and do a quick look in his heart. If my friend here has not received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, I pray that he would do so now. And then I say, sir, if you would like to receive the gift that God has for you today, say this after me with your heart and lips out loud. Say, dear Lord Jesus, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me and cleanse me. Wash me and cleanse me. Set me free. Set me free. Jesus, thank you that you died for me. Jesus, thank you that you died for me. I believe that you were risen from the dead. I believe that you risen from the dead. And you're coming back again for me. And you're coming back again for me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost. Give me a passion for the lost. A hunger for the things of God. A hunger for the things of God. And a holy boldness and a holy bold to preach the gospel to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ of Jesus Christ I'm saved I am saved I'm born again I'm born again I'm forgiven I'm forgiven and I'm on my way to heaven and I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart because I have Jesus hey, in my heart amen amen, amen. And so <laughs> wow. amen and then and then at the end, I say, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I tell you today that all your sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. Always remember to run to God and not from him because he loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. Wow. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and you Amen. have done that with how many people? Se oh, oh, uh, 794. 794. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank and you, Jesus. Normally, <laughs> normally, where do you do that? Normally, where? Um, so the the school separates us. Um, we have to go every week. Soul winning lab is one of our requirements. But obviously, they teach us. So soul winning is a lifestyle, not a program. It's not. It's not a. It's not a requirement. It's a lifestyle. You go soul winning wherever you are at the grocery, like grocery store, at the gas station. Like I get a lot of my souls. I just go get gas, and I'm like, okay, my my filling up like no one's gonna do anything I'll just go over here and talk to this other person and then they get saved and by the time I get done then it's done and I'm like woohoo hallelujah and so um <laughs> but a lot of the times the school uh, separates us and we do door knocking so we go door to door and we knock at every single door in the neighborhood around us and people come open their uh, open the door and they're like what's up you know and a lot of people are like oh I don't want what you're selling I'm like well I'm not selling anything this is the best gift you'll receive this is for free <laughs> So, so um, it's amazing. Door knocking is great. And then we also go to Walmart parking lots. And we actually call it Soul Mart because <laughs> we got a lot of souls there. <laughs> Walmart, Soul Mart. Uh, and so it's very fruitful. We don't usually go in the, in, the, um, in the store because we have gotten kicked out multiple times because 
because, yeah. And so we just stay in the parking lot, and we just catch people coming out of the store with their groceries. And I sometimes I'm like, hey, can I take this cart for you? And then I, and then sometimes they're like, oh, thank you. I'm like, I have a quick question. Has anyone ever told you? <laughs> and so then they want to listen. They're like, wow, this lady is, is taking my cart for me and telling me something? Okay. So, yeah, we go to, mo- we go to stores, um, houses. Uh, yeah, so we, <laughs> I tell just... Us, <laughs> tell us a little of that little cool stories. Your mom was really amazing, too. <laughs> okay, tell so one time um, I was in, I live in Lakeland, Florida, and I was driving somewhere, and there was a long, I just came to a red light, and I was like, all right, Lord, this is going to be a long time. And I look over, and there's two ladies jamming out to their songs, and I'm like, I'm going to get their attention. So I roll down their window, and I start waving at them. They're like jamming. I'm like, come on, come on. And they look at me, and they're just smiling. I'm like, hey, has anyone ever told you God loves you? And they're like, what? And I'm like, and I go on with the script, and I get to the prayer part, and I'm like, all right, I know that green light's coming. I got to be fast. So I'm like, I'm just going to say a quick prayer. Lord bless me. You know, I just kept kept going, kept going. And then they started saying the prayer, and as soon as I got to, like, midway, then it started, then the light turned green. I'm like, oh, no. But then I was like, all right, Lord bless you guys. And they started driving away, and they started honking. They're like, hallelujah, we're saved. I was like, amen. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, amen. You are safe. Have, have a great day. And it just, stoplight souls are the best. Sometimes I start the prayer at one stoplight. It turns green. I'm like, oh, I didn't get to say the prayer with them. They know that, that God loves them. That's great. And I'm like, Lord, I really want to have another chance. So as the next stoplight we come comes to, it's red. And I'm like, I get to finish it. Hallelujah. So I rolled out my window, and they're like, it's you again. I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so then we get to finish the prayer, and it turns green. I'm like, woo, hallelujah. So it, it's amazing. You do it anywhere, anytime. It, it is, it, yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's wonderful. Well, what do you tell someone who is like where you were mm-hmm. like a year ago mm-hmm. when you could not even get it out of your mouth and they are right there right now? What do you tell them? Oh there goodness. are people watching online. There is people oh, in the room too. I know exactly how you're feeling. I know that you do not want to talk to people. <laughs> and I know that the fear is like there. But you, there's. Fear is not of God. You know, fear, it, fear is a spirit, and it needs to leave. And God will give you the boldness, and the Holy Spirit will give you boldness to go out. And just you just have to step out of your comfort zone, and you just got to let the Lord work. Because it's not us. It's all, the, it's all God. You know, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It's nothing to do with us. So as soon as you say the gospel, as soon as you say, hey, for all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. The Lord takes over. The Holy Spirit convicts them. And boom, you have them. Boom, they're, they're in your boat. You know, you're fishing. You're, you're fishermen, you know. And so, um, and so you just read it. And all of a sudden, it just keeps coming. It keeps coming. And I tell you what, last year I got 30 souls, my first chord. And I was like, woohoo, that's so great. You know, I was like, yay. And then I came back in August. The exact same amount of time, I went to 255 souls. And I was like, wow, there was a breakthrough in there. So the breakthrough is coming. You just have to start it and it will come. <laughs> Amen. Well, come on. Amen. Woo. Amen. Well, I'm going to ask you to pray yes. for anyone in this room yeah. that is mm. on, even those watching online, that is mm. like, Lord, I want that joy and boldness that Anne has. I want just a little piece of that or a little more than that yes, to be able to go win people for Jesus. If you are the one we, we are talking to, would you stand up and receive this prayer? Go ahead and pray for us. Hallelujah. You want that prayer for boldness to win souls. Come on, stand up where you are. Receive this. It counts by impartation, I'm telling you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the boldness. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for all these people that want to do your work. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to give them the boldness now in Jesus' name. It is all you and nothing of them. Lord Jesus, thank you for filling them up right now with the boldness of you. Lord, you say in the word that um, no man pursueth and, and the lot. Yeah, the, the, the righteous are as bold as a lion. So, Father, thank you so much that we are the righteousness of God, that we are bold as a lion. We are not fearful. We are bold and we are going to proclaim your word because you told us to go out and preach the gospel to every creature. And so we're going to do that right now in Jesus' name. Give them the boldness that they may, they may go out and not have any doubts or any fear or anything. They're going to be bold and they're going to be <laughs> they're gonna be filled with joy as soon as they win their first soul. And they're going to be. <laughs> <They're good. laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you're doing it right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Receive. Receive in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus.
<laughs> Get some joy too. Come on. Take some, take some, take some. <laughs> Take some joy, come on. <laughs> I'm not going to fall off. I'm going to sit on this year. <laughs> In Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Come on, give God a praise. This is one of your students here in our church at the Hub. She was telling us about how people are getting saved through her in the school. 797 people. And she just fell over with joy. <laughs> Look at the people just <laughs> rejoicing. Come on. Tell Pastor Rodney, God bless you, Pastor. <laughs> Oh, man. You may be seated. <laughs> One of the ushers, come help me. Make sure she gets down. Make sure she doesn't fall over. Come on. Quick, 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 quick. <laughs> we need to get carpet. She forgot her Bible and her cell phone. It's all right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's not a good way to start a service, Pastor. I don't know, is it a good way or what? It's the best way to start a service. Amen. Well, we are, we are believing God for a soul-winning culture and to become a soul-winning community. And we are inviting people to send pictures and names of their prodigals. We got hundreds of them. But I want to invite people to pray together. I'm believing God for 500 people to come together in prayer all over the world and all over the country. And we can begin to raise an army of people that just want to see prodigals return. We're going to have a lot of testimonies. But most prodigals will come by being reached one-on-one -on -one by someone. And so as you do it for others... They're going to go, and they're going to find your own children somewhere on the streets. And they're going to be like, has someone told you that God has a good plan for your life? And it will hit them so hard, they will not resist. They'll come to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Now, this is what we are doing. Today, we submitted our book. It's called 40 Days of Total Transformation. We submitted it to Amazon, and we are hoping for it to be approved within 72 hours. And then we're going to have copies of it, hopefully next week or as soon as possible. I want it to be as soon as possible. Now, here is the deal. We are believing God to put that book and Bibles and other materials we are getting for soul winning. So help us to do that. Help us to win souls tonight. Amen? And um, then on Friday, we are going to be with Pastor Landon in River Falls, Wisconsin. Some of you can come there, can't you? It's like 46 minutes from here. 
and we're going to have a full, full, full house. A lot of people are going to come, hundreds of them. It's the hope night, and we're going to lead people to Jesus. And we are doing how many hope nights this year? Eight of them. And that is on top of other things we are doing here. And we want to win souls and help others who are winning souls. So um, make your giving count tonight. And someone was teaching me this weekend about turning your dollar into a soul winning warrior. Like your dollar can become a soul winning warrior. It can go places where you could not be able to go by sending others there or said the Bible there or said someone like Anne there. But I want to have you help us to really turn this hub into a soul winning community. Amen? Amen. So, uh, um, what I'm believing God, I'm believing God for a thousand documented salvations that we can follow up. We're having a ton of follow-up materials that we're going to put in their hands and we're going to also put a lot of work into following people up because salvation, then discipleship, plugging them in to become an army to go get more uh, from the kingdom of darkness back to God. That's, that's a whole plan and you're going to be a part of this and you're going to love the fruit. Amen? Amen. So, um, ask the Lord what he would have you do, how he would have you give tonight, and do exactly what God tells you to do. Um, and, and ushers, we have envelopes for the people. Um, if you're in the room and you want to give, uh, you can grab that envelope from the ushers by putting up your hand. Those of you watching online, there's ways to give on the big screen on, on top of the platform where you are watching from. We love you guys and we appreciate your generosity. Amen. Prepare your offering and I'm just going to pray after we get this and then Pastor Landon will come up. <coughs> Father, we bless this offering tonight. We bless every gift, every giver, even those online. We pray a blessing. Thank you for the spirit of generosity in this room. And I pray this will be a soul winning community. And I thank you that this seed goes into the soil of harvesting of souls. And we'll see a major, major harvest of souls out of this seed. We bless you for an army of soul winners coming out of this place tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you can stand on your feet as we sing along, and then you can bring your offering to the altar. Singing
So day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day Lift your hands. Father, we thank you tonight. As we go to hear your word, I pray a blessing on each of us. We pray an anointing on Pastor Landon and he brings the word. And our lives will never be the same. Hallelujah. Remain standing. We have a man of God in the house. Great friend of mine. We're going to have him again next week for the three-day intensive. But I felt like... He had something to release for us tonight. And a few months ago, we just felt like this would be a good time for him to be here. He is the senior pastor of Oasis Church in Eau Claire. If you've never heard him, you'll probably be having a great treat tonight as well. Uh, pastor Landon, Hui, come up here, man. I love you, man. You are the best. Give him a warm welcome to the hub. Awesome. You guys stop, please, please. No more, no more. You can, you can sit down, you're good. Turn to your neighbor and just look him in the eyes and say, you're looking really good tonight. <laughs> look at the other neighbor and the other neighbor on the other side and say, you've been working out recently? Okay. Well, I love Dr. Charles and, yes, and Pastor Lindsay and their whole family, Israel. Um, I just, they've been such a blessing since my wife and I, we came from Texas two and a half years ago and became the pastors of Oasis. And, you know, the question that I've had is, Lord, is there anybody else around here that has a heart for revival and is tired of dead religion and dead church? <laughs> And wants to see the Holy Spirit do what only the Holy Spirit could do. I had this, this vision one time when I was praying. And I saw a pastor welcome Jesus in this vision through the back doors. And they put this straitjacket on Jesus. And then they ushered him to the corner of the room. And they said, Jesus, we want your presence, but we don't want your power. So please wear this. And he wore it, and he wasn't arguing. He just, we don't want to advertise that Jesus is here. And, but we know sometimes when you start to move, th weird things begin to happen. People begin to fall down laughing. It kind of reminded me of probably what happened on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down in the book of Acts. And they thought they were drunk. They said, no, we're not drunk like you might think we are. And I was reminded, I was reminded because I've been to the River Church, many of them, and I can tell you around Dr. Roddy because all of his students, they come back laughing, they're filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. The one thing I love about uh, Pastor Rodney is when COVID broke out, they started a service called The Stand, and they've been doing it every night. Now, just think about the logistics from a church perspective, doing a service every night. I don't know if they're hit 2,000, so three... 1,000-something services night after night after night. And um, God is moving. He has this tombstone at the front of his church. And correct me if I'm saying it wrong, but it says something along the lines of, here lies Rodney Howard Brown. He's, he's dead to the opinions of man and what other people think about him. And I know this. 
You can either have a fear of God or a fear of man, but you can't have both. When I, uh, I had this vision, so Jesus was in the corner and he wanted to move, but the pastor wouldn't let him. And I, I think that that's the case in so many churches today. I remember when I first became a pastor, and my parents are pastors. I grew up in the church. Um, I grew up on the front row of the church. And I'm going to share a little bit about um, my story growing up and, and experiencing ministry as a kid. But um, I remember the very first, one of the very first Sundays we started with pre-service prayer. And we had about 70 people in our church. And it, it was, if it wasn't dead, it was on life support. Anybody ever walked into a dead, dead church before? When the crickets are worshiping louder than the people, you know there's a problem. And I'm like, Lord, what am I even supposed to do with these people? Like, I'm preaching, I can't even look at them. I'm about to fall asleep, you know. I feel like they're, they're standing like Jesus is still in the grave. Somebody needs to tell him he's not in the grave anymore. You know, this isn't a funeral. This should be a celebration service of what God's doing, you know. And so, like, I just remember pre-service prayer. We were praying, and I started speaking in tongues. And I was praying with our, you know, our little our prayer team that we had. And I started speaking in tongues, and as I was speaking in tongues over the mic, a, fa a new family walks in the back doors, and I heard this voice in my ear, if you keep speaking in tongues, that family is going to leave, and your church will never grow. You know what that voice was? It was the spirit of fear. Fear of man. And I had a decision to make. And that was a turning point. Not just in my life, but in the church's life. And I was like, I'm not going to bow to what other people think I should do. I get my, my report and my calling is, you know, what he wants me to do, it comes from him, not them. <laughs> Amen. And so I just held by my mouth. I just kept speaking in tongues. I don't know if that family stayed or left, but I know this. In the past two and a half years, we've grown from 70 to 600. Come on. And we're planning this year to double. We'll be over 1,000 by December. I'm telling you. All because people are hungry to see the Holy Spirit move. They want to feel the presence of God. You know, like a patty cack me message and a, you know, a, a quick song isn't setting anybody free. It's putting people to sleep, if anything. And there's just something stirring in my heart, and I want to share with this uh, tonight with you guys. There's an urgency stirring in my heart that God's looking for people that he can use that walks in the power of the Holy Spirit and is not afraid of what other people think about them. Bef before I jump into the message, um, there's a couple of things that I heard that I want to pray over people for. And... About a month ago, the Lord said, give me the first 10 minutes of your message just to flow in the gifts. And so that's what I've been try stewarding, trying to do. And I want to pray over some people. There's some prophetic words I feel like God's highlighted some people to me. But I also want to pray over people to see them healed. And we've seen people that have been paralyzed from the chest down, like completely supernaturally healed. The doctor said, no, this person will never walk again. And they've got x-rays. And then he was prayed over, this person was prayed over, he said he felt heat come all through his body. The next Sunday, he walked up to the stage to testify what Jesus did in his body. We've seen blind eyes open. Heck, and hanging out with Dr. Charles, there's people getting healed all over the place, even at Hope Nights. When we were in Green Bay, there was a lady that had crutches on, another lady who had issues with her feet, foot. Next thing you know, she's running back and forth across the stage. And I'm learning a lot from this man of God. Um, and I just, I want to pray for people for healing. Can we do that? So a couple of things that I heard that I want to pray for. And if this is you, you can just stand up and we'll pray over you. But the first thing that I heard is pray for people that um, have any form of skin cancer. Skin cancer. That's the first thing I heard. I also heard the Lord say, pray over people who have a mother who is sick. So if that's you, one or the other, skin cancer, or a mother who is sick. And I saw a mom that was sick that had issues in their lungs. Like hard breathing issues. Pray for people 
that have numbness in their fingers and their feet and have issues with their feet and their toes. If that's you, I want you to stand up. Pray for people who have sleeping issues. It's hard for you to go to sleep. You're not sleeping enough. We've been praying. I don't know why, but the Lord just, the last three weeks, we've been praying for people with sleeping issues, and they have been sleeping the whole night. Pray for people that have injuries from a car accident. If that's you, I want you to come forward real quick. Thank you, Jesus. Dr. Charles, if you, any of your altar team has any anointing oil, I just want to anoint these people real quick. If, if you're standing, come up front here real quick, just along the front. We're just going to anoint you and pray over you and believe that the Holy Spirit's going to heal you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. If you want to just go and just start anointing people, Israel, that'd be awesome. I'm going to let you do it. I'm going to stay up here. I might come down here in a second. You know, the pastor's job is to equip the people for the work of the ministry. I'm trying to do a better job of, like, people in our church, hey, you go lay hands on people and see them healed. Like, I can do it, but I want to see you do it. He's just going to go, just go ahead and start anointing people. As, as he's anointing, just lift your hands like you're going to receive something. We're just going to make it real fast, just one at a time, one at a time, real fast. Just go down the line. And let's pray right now. Just repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for healing my body. And I receive your healing right now. Now, wherever the pain is, I want you to say, pain, leave right now in Jesus' name. And I just see the Holy Spirit moving right now across this room. We speak to skin cancer and command it to leave right now. We speak to injuries that have been formed through car accidents, and we thank you, Jesus, for healing people's spine and their back. We thank you, Lord, for people tonight that they're going to sleep through the whole night. They're going to get a full eight hours of sleep. Some people haven't slept for so long, they probably need 24 hours of sleep, Lord. Give it to them. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're touching people's fingers and their feet. The numbness is leaving and the, the blood's beginning to flow through areas in their body that hasn't flown through a while. I thank you, Lord, for feeling coming back in nerves right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, completely healed, completely healed. I thank you for your peace right now from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. I come against any anxiety that's been attacking them. I come against any worry that's been attacking them. Thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, completely healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. And this is your room. We're your people. We're here for you, Lord. How many of you feel God's presence in the room right now? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Sir, what's your name? Nick, Lynn, are you guys together or just friends or, okay, cool. I just see God's hands on both of you. And um, I know this sound, might sound really generic, 
but I see God closing doors and opening doors. And I believe that he's going to open up some God doors. And I think you're going to step into even more of your destiny this year in 2024. And Nick, right? Um, I see you, God using you as a voice. Um, and especially a voice of encouragement. I just see you encouraging a lot of people, especially your family. I see God using you to be a light in your family. And so can I pray over you guys? Is that okay? Praise the Lord. And we all said, amen. You can go be seated. There's a guy behind you, Dr. Charles. What's your name? Christopher. Christopher. Okay. I feel like God gave me a word for you, Christopher. What up? <laughs> The, the word that I got for you was bulldog in the spirit. And what I heard the phrase was, I see some holy shaking happening in your life this year. But I'm also seeing you being known as a man of the word and fresh revelation from heaven. And... Um, and then I, I just really feel like this is going to be the year of massive breakthrough for you. But I just heard the word, he's a man of, he's a man of the word. And this is going to sound really strange, but I saw, I'm just going to say what I saw. I saw a bulldog with a big old steak in its mouth. <laughs> and I think God's going to continue to give you revelation on his word. And I think that he's going to share things with you that he hasn't shared with anybody. And so, Chris, right? Christopher. Stretch your hands towards Christopher. God, I thank you for Christopher. And I thank you, Lord, that you see him. And, Lord, you're going to use him. And I thank you, Lord, you're going to use him, Father, to bring revelation out of your word and to share the heart of the Father to a lot of people. I even see a blog that you're writing, Christopher, encouraging people. So, God, watch over him. Put your angels around him in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And the girl that was up here that fell on the ground earlier, what I, what the, th the phrase that I heard, I saw kind of like, the phrase I heard is that the Lord wanted to give you a, a stage similar to what Catherine Kuhlman had. And then I also heard the phrase, you can reach hundreds on the streets, but if you go to social media, you'll reach millions. And so... I see you reaching millions of people on social media. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, hey, I just want to jump into the word that God's given me for tonight. The title is Discovering Your Destiny. Discovering Your Destiny. You know, there's a reason why Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Life was the number one best-selling book ever outside of the Bible. is because people are, like, asking the question, what is the purpose that you have for my life? I, uh... I grew up as a, a pastor's kid, like I said. My wife and I have been here in Wisconsin for two and a half years. And our very first Sunday, I heard the Lord say, I want you to wear your running shoes as a prophetic statement that you're going to be running at a speed you never ran before. And since then, since our first Sunday, we have not stopped running. 
since we started, and I know I've shared this before in the past, but we had this couple in our church that owned a bar, and they said, hey, we were wanting to sell the bar, and um, we were having dinner with them at the bar, and I just heard the Lord say, why don't you set up a night of, like, worship here in this bar and call it Hope Night? And I asked them, hey, before you sell it, what if we just praise Jesus in this bar? And this had been a bar that there was a murder in in the past. This had been a bar where a lot of demonic bands had came and play. One of the bands that played in there, they don't call it concerts, they call it soul harvesting. And they, they count their attendance by we harvested 500 souls tonight. That's how many people came to listen. And so this is the first place that we did a hope night in. <laughs> and it was seated maybe like, you know, the bar wasn't super big. The venue was seated maybe 100. And that night 150 people showed up. And it was packed out. And fast forward today, now we've done 17 hope nights in 17 cities. And this year we're going to eight more cities. And our very first Sunday, I'm just going to be honest with you, like, I'm a new pastor, like a lot, I've been in church my whole life, but there's a difference when you're sitting on the other side of the table, and some of you pastors, you grow up, some of you people, if you know in ministry, you completely understand what I'm talking about. There's a weight of responsibility. I remember when the pastor that was before me drove off, I almost wanted to cry. I was like, oh God, <laughs> if the alarm goes off, you know who they're going to call at the, you know, from the church? They're going to call me. I'm the one that has to, in that first week, the alarm went off like four times. I was like, God, please, what is going on? It just it was messing up. And a weight came on my shoulders, but then I heard the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to carry this weight for you, Landon. And that's what it's been like. And every Sunday, I kind of see it like in our whole life is there's a boat with a sail. And I say, Holy Spirit, blow the sail. Blow this boat and we'll go wherever you want to take us. And my, my job is like to let the whole, just be obedient to the Holy Spirit. That's the number one Holy Spirit. I want to be obedient to you. So our very first Sunday, I remember that the week that the goal that we had to cover all of our bills at the church, I'm just going to be honest, was $6,000 a week. That's what had to come in to cover the bills for the church. And so I'm like, I've never had to have this type of faith to cover bills, including my salary. But we took a pay cut from Dallas to Wisconsin because we knew God called us here. And so I'm like, well, Lord, what is that to you? It's nothing. I'm believing you for it. And when you got 60, 70 people, you're like, Lord, bring it in. Has anybody ever trusted the Lord with their finances before? I know I'm not speaking to the many people here tonight. So, And the offering started to grow. I'm like, okay, God, I believe for 10000 a week. And the offering started to grow, and he began to bring it in and bring it in. Two and a half years ago, I was like, God, please, just pay the bills. And now every hope night we do, I'm believing God for 20000 per hope night. And I'm very thankful for this man of God right here because he's one of the largest contributors to hope nights that we've had. Thank you. But I, I learned this. God, if you just trust him, he'll provide and he'll show off. When I was on staff at a church one day, once a month these pastors would come together and they do these unity nights. And all the lead pastors across the stage would go up and they'd each pray for five to ten minutes and give a prophetic word of God, get put on their heart. And I was sitting there in the chair, like on the third row back, saying, man, I've got a prophetic word. I wish I could be on that stage. And there's like a fire stirring in me, like, not trying to like compare myself, but in a way I was, of like, man... I could really bring some fire right now. Lord, I'm waiting. And I, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, Landon, the, sta the stage I'm preparing for you is way bigger than that one. And I had to learn how to be patient and trust the Lord for his timing. I think that's a prophetic word for somebody here tonight. The stage that God's preparing you for is way bigger than you really even think. If you'll be patient and if you'll trust him... You'll, you'll be standing in places you never thought you would be, talking to people you never thought you would meet. And you say, only God could have done this. That's for you too, sir. 
There's crusades in your future. I want you to know that. I see it all over you. And so my goal has been trying to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. I remember we did our first event called the Sound of Freedom that Dr. Charles came and spoke at. And we reached out and we just did a shot in the dark. Hey, let's see if Lance Wall now will come and speak at it. And we sent an email and months went by. And how many of you are familiar with Lance Wall now at all? Anybody? And I'm like, he doesn't know who I am. We're in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. It's not like it's New York or L.A. or, you know, Minneapolis. Um, and I, I, it was two or three months, I didn't hear anything. And one day I was in my living room. And I heard the Lord say, Lane, just begin to praise me. So I walked around the living room. It's just my wife and my girls were somewhere else. And I was just speaking in tongues. And I was just worshiping and praising. And as I was doing that, I hear a ding go off on my computer. And it was Lance Wanow's assistant. And they said, Pastor Lane, we're so sorry. Somehow we're just now seeing your email. We talked to Lance. He's prayed about it, and he feels like he's supposed to come and be a part of this event. And so I'm like, okay, well, I was really praising the Lord then, like, oh, dear Lord. I remember when I picked him up at the airport, I was like, okay, what do I say? Don't freak out, Landon. You know, like, had the water waiting for him. He's going to sit in the back. And it was kind of an awkward, you know, first ride trying to get to know each other. And, uh, but we, he came, this was last year, and he said, hey, I'm doing these crusades with Mario Murillo. I'm going to be in Colorado Springs. You ought to come and check it out. And so I'm like, okay, well, that'd be awesome. And so, you know, I, he left and life went on. And that was going to be, I think, in three or four months from then. And I was taking a shower one day and I heard the Holy Spirit say, go to Colorado Springs. You have to listen to the voice of the Lord and obey what he tells you to do. And so I tell my wife, Kristen, I said, Kristen, I heard the Lord say, I'm supposed to go to Colorado Springs. So we purchased tickets. We got a hotel. Lance invited me, but it's not like he has a front row seat saved for me or anything. So I'm just going to go and sit in the back and just see what the Lord does. And I'm just going to be obedient and go. So I go, and the first couple, they were doing these tent crusades. And a lot of people were being saved and healed. And I was sitting in the back. And one of the morning sessions, I heard the Lord say, a prophet's going to pray for you today. I was like, well, awesome. Lord. Okay, cool. And I heard that Lou Engle was in the house that, that morning. And so at the end of the service, I heard the Holy Spirit say, go and introduce yourself to Lou Engle. And so I walked over, and uh, I waited. There's a lot of people who want to talk to him. And I have a mutual friend named Andrew Whalen that is a spiritual son of Lou Engle. So I walk over and I just start talking to him. We're talking. And he said, wait a second. The Lord just told me I'm supposed to pray for you. A prophet's going to pray for you today. And so I prayed for him, and then Lance saw me up there. He said, Landon, that's so awesome that you came. He goes, come to our green room. I want to introduce you to everybody. And I didn't go up there to try to make a room for myself. I just went because the Holy Spirit told me to go. And so I find myself in a green room sitting across the table from a guy named Ron McIntosh. Ron McIntosh used to travel with a uh, healing revivalist. He has a school in Tulsa. His name is, what is his name? Or Roberts. He traveled with Or Roberts, and he worked with him for many years. And so we started talking, and he said, Landon, I don't know, I don't know you, but I just feel like the Lord's saying that Mario is supposed to come and do a tent crusade in Wisconsin. And I'm like, awesome. I was like, okay, okay, well. I talked to my wife on the phone. I was like, I think I just agreed to something, but I don't even know what that means. Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> Fast forward to today, this summer, Mario Murillo is going to come. He's bringing a lot of people. He's bringing a tent that seats 5,000 people to our city in Eau Claire. And we're believing that over 10,000 people is going to show up. We're going to see thousands of people saved. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now... Had I ignored the voice of the Holy Spirit, and for some reason he speaks in the shower. Listen while you're taking a shower. Hey, can anybody agree with me? Had I ignored that voice, this would not be happening. It's like breadcrumbs sometimes. Like, you know, you, have, you just follow one breadcrumb and the Holy Spirit would drop another one. You go and you pick that up and the Holy Spirit would drop another and you go pick it up. And before you know it, you're in a room you never thought you'd be in. You're talking to people. You, there's no way you'd be able to meet him ever. And then God begins to move and do supernatural things. 
And there is a spiritual, there is a financial investment. I had to buy plane, plane tickets. I had to get a hotel, but I was obeying the Lord. Can I share another story? This is how the Lord is doing supernatural things in our church and in my life. I spend time with him, and he speaks to me, and I obey, and I obey whatever he tells me to do. I had a dream two nights ago, or two weeks ago. I was flying over a city, and the city was Charlotte. And I zeroed in on a guy named um, Alan, and I heard the Lord say, fly to Charlotte, connect with Alan, and have him pour into you. Alan is one of the top Christian influencers right now on social media. He, he's in, God's using him in a very big way. And so I reached out to Alan, and we're setting up a meeting right now where I'm going to fly to Charlotte. Now, I'm not friends with him or anything, but I'm obeying the voice of the Lord. The Holy Spirit will tell you to do things that are outside of your comfort zone, and it's going to cost you financially, but you have to obey him. Does this make sense? Okay. Praise the Lord. So listen to the Holy Spirit's voice. I, I think this year we're moving into a 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2 season. And it's now is the time of God's favor. And now is the day of salvation. I remember the day I heard the Lord tell me my destiny. How, how many of you have ever had an encounter with the Lord? How many of you have ever heard him tell you what you're supposed to do with your life. I, I remember I was at youth camp, and my dad was a pastor, and growing up in high school, I remember people would ask me, Landon, are you going to be a pastor like your dad? And I'd say, no, I'm not going to be a pastor like my dad. Not because I didn't like him being a pastor or ministry, but I didn't want an expectation to come on me like he's just going to do whatever his parents do. And I knew I've got to hear the Lord speak to me and tell me what to do. And I want to encourage you that you have to hear the Lord's voice yourself. You can't listen to a counselor. No, there's, there's, there's room for people with wisdom and prophetic people. But you've got to hear God's voice for you. Amen? Amen? And so I remember I was in 12th grade. I was at youth camp. A guy up front gives this altar call. You want to grow closer to the Lord? You know, I want you to come up front. So there's hundreds of students going up front. I'm up front. I'm laying on my face before the Lord, weeping, having an encounter. And I look over at my dad. He's laying right next to me. He's weeping, having an encounter. At that time, my dad was our youth pastor and our pastor. Some of you pastors understand that too. <laughs> We're both weeping. I see my dad weeping. Holy Spirit's weeping. I hear the Lord say, Landon. That's not just for your dad, that's for you too. Ministry isn't just for him, it's for you. That was my moment of encounter with the Lord. Why I heard him tell me what to do. That's all I needed was a word from the Lord. It's so easy to listen to the wrong voice, get into a career that you hate, that you're not fulfilled, and you wonder what your purpose is. It's never too late to change your career and obey the Lord. Well, I've been in here for 15 years, and this is what I've been doing with my life. And, you know, and I want to just take a step back and say, if you're in business, business is a ministry. Whatever you do, God's raising up, is, has anointed people to do business. God's raising up anointed people to be in politics. God's raised up anointed people to be in all spheres of influence. Can I hear it? Amen. amen. So don't think that just ministry is a stage with a microphone. God's looking for people to send people in any area of darkness for you to be a light. But I had this encounter with the Lord, and it was very similar to my dad when he was my age. It's really interesting. He went to a youth convention, and there was a speaker named Marvin Gorman speaking. And there was hundreds, if not thousands of students, young adults in the altar. And my dad said this question. He said, God, if you call me in the ministry... Have that guy come over here and tap me on the shoulder and tell me that. Immediately after he said that, he goes, that's the stupidest prayer I could have ever prayed. There's hundreds of people. If he doesn't tap me on the shoulder, does that mean I'm not called to the ministry? Like, he was just regretting, like, why would I even say something like that? And he's like, Lord, I'll just do whatever you want me to do. Five minutes goes by. Somebody taps him on the back shoulder. The speaker, Marvin Gorman, had worked his way through the crowd. And he said, son... He said, the Lord highlighted you to me on the stage and told me to give you a message that God's called you to the ministry. And I tell you what, 
he's been running ever since then too, running with the Lord. There's a moment of encounter that God gives. When I was asked, Lord, what do you want me to speak on tonight? This is the first verse that jumped in my spirit. Esther 4, verse 14. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance from the Jews uh, will arise from another place. But you and your family, your father's family will perish. But who knows? And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. This was her cousin Mordecai. Mordecai was speaking prophetically to Esther. This is when Esther discovered her destiny. How many are familiar with the story of Esther? God used her to free and save the Jewish people. I just hear the Lord saying that he's going to speak to people tonight. And I hear the Lord say he's going to speak to people in the night. Some of you, he's going to wake you up. Some of you, you're going to be driving. Some of you, you're going to be taking a shower. And you're going to hear his voice speak to you. And you're going to discover your destiny. Listen, life is too short to waste it. I'm going to say that again. Life is too short to waste it. Moses, he discovered his destiny at the burning bush. David, he discovered his destiny when Samuel anointed him king. God wants to show you what your destiny is. Psalms verse, um, chapter 90 verse 12 is something I was been thinking about recently. And it says this, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days. I don't know how many days I have left. You don't know how many days you have left. But there should be an urgency in your heart to say, God, whatever I have left, Lord, use me to build your kingdom. Whatever it looks like. Whatever you call me to do. And it's so easy to give God excuses of why you can't be used or why right now is not a good time or, you know, Lord, I'm, I'm really busy now. But I want to encourage you, any excuse you give to the Lord on this side of eternity is going to sound really stupid when you stand before the Lord. God is placing a holy urgency in warriors right now that he's about to launch up and use in supernatural ways. I remember I was talking to this couple. We were talking about them working with us in our church. This is a word for people in ministry. And this is when God said, Lynn, he, he told me, so he taught me something. Not everybody's called to run with you. I was talking to this couple, very gifted, very talented. And I was talking about how God's put on our hearts to do these hope nights. And they said, Landon, these hope nights, they said, you know, you're wearing running shoes, but we're wearing flip-flops. And we just have a slower pace of life, and we don't feel that what you're doing is sustainable, and we would really encourage you to pray about it just to make sure the Lord told you to do this. And I looked down, and he, this guy was wearing flip-flops, and I was wearing running shoes. And I heard the Lord say, not everybody's called to run with you, Landon. And when God puts a vision in your heart to do something, be careful who you share it with. Don't try to talk the wrong people onto your team. All they'll do is slow you down. You know, I think the number one reason why God isn't using people to do big things isn't because... We serve, we don't serve a big God is because that we pray small prayers. And I feel like what the Lord wants me to tell you right now is that you need to have some sort of a vision board for your life. You need to ask the Holy Spirit, what is my purpose, what is my calling, and what are you believing God to do? And when you see that picture, you probably need to double it. If you can fulfill God's purpose for your life, 
with the money in your account, your vision is too small. I just want to encourage somebody. And listen, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit myself. The last three years, the vision that God's given Chris and I for our church, if God doesn't provide, we're in the red big time. We did Hope Nights last year. We did 11 of them. People say, we don't take up offerings. They say, how are you going to pay for these Hope Nights? I said, by, by faith. Where's the money going to come from? The Lord's going to bring it in. And we don't take up offerings because we're, we're trying to reach lost people. I don't want them to say, well, he's just coming in here after our money. God's got all the money in the world. I remember, and God will connect you with the right people you're supposed to run with. Can I tell a really cool story? I invited Dr. Charles to speak, which was the first mistake. I'm just joking. <laughs> He came and spoke last year. We had done Hope Nights, and I think we had done, we would invested probably about 100, 120,000 in Hope Nights by that time. And not all the money come in. We, the, the blessing is that when we started, I had a guy call me from Texas. Hey, the Lord told me I was supposed to support you. Um, I, I want to give you, can I send you a check for 5,000? I'll do 10,000, and you just let me know how much you need, and we can kind of go from there. I was like, wow. And then another lady from Atlanta called me and said, hey, the Lord put you in our heart. I'm supposed to sow 10000 Can I? Where can I send it to? And then another person called me and sowed another five and 10000 And then people started coming up to me randomly and ha handed me money. And I knew it was for God's breathing on this. But we still we needed a breakthrough last year. And Dr. Charles was preaching. I said, okay, if I share this. I've already kind of walked down this road. People would hate me if I stopped there. He preached an awesome message. At the end, he said, I want to pray over the business owners in this church. If you're a business owner, come forward. God, I just want to pray over you. So he prayed. He said, I hear the Lord saying, there's somebody here. God's calling you to write a check for $100,000 and sow it into what Landon's doing in the church in the whole nights. I was like, wow, man of great faith. Praise the Lord. That is awesome. And... Uh, this is just after we did our Hope Night in Green Bay, which was the most expensive. I think it cost us like 30 grand. And um, I just remember I was in the shower one day, again. And in the sh this, he spoke that on a Sunday. It was a Tuesday. I was in the shower, and I was thinking to myself, you know, if I would have taken up the offering and said, hey, if 30 people would give $1,000 we would cover our hope night for Green Bay. You know, just thinking through how I can do what only the Lord can do. And I was just thinking through, and my phone was on the counter. I heard it ding, and so I got off. I got out of the shower, and I watched over to my phone, and it was our bookkeeper from our church. And she said, Landon, a business owner just dropped off a check for $100,000. And I, I, when I saw it, I just began to cry, just like, thank you, Jesus, because there's a weight that you carry when you're trusting the Lord. And I showed my wife, and I was like, Kristen, you're going to have to sit down for this one. And that was the largest donation our church in the history of a church has ever received. This August will celebrate 40 years of a church. All three pastors, I'm the third one, all three of them have come from Texas. I don't know what's, that, what's up with that. But it made church history. And I think it's like the people you run with, there's, you need to be careful who you're running with. Does this make sense? I remember my dad when he, my parents, they were youth pastors when I was a kid. And we were in, he was a youth pastor in Arkansas, and then he went and was a youth pastor in Colorado. And he got connected to this church called Timberline in Fort Collins, Colorado. He was the youth pastor. The church is maybe 100, 150. And they, he started, you know, preaching and nothing was happening in the youth group. And he was just like desperate for like, Lord, we need a breakthrough. Like, am I even supposed to be the youth pastor here? And he was really struggling with it. So one day he set up a meeting with his lead pastor. His pastor's name was Barry. And he said, he said, Pastor, I'm struggling. We've been here for two months. Not one kid has gotten saved. He goes, I need a breakthrough. I don't know if I can keep doing this. And so Pastor Derry said, why don't we just pray right now? So they just prayed that the Holy Spirit would move. 
Well, that night, my dad preached, and there is an altar call. And the roughest kid in the youth group came down and broke and started weeping. He said, after that one kid had an encounter with the Lord, something caught fire in the youth group. And they went from 10 kids to over 100 kids in a couple months. There was a breakthrough that happened when they just, he just surrendered to the Lord. And I remember my dad told, told me a story that like my dad, one day the Lord told him, hey, I want you to resign this position and go on a road and be an evangelist. And at that time, the church had grown from 150 to like 800 in six or seven months. And they were having 20 or 30 families a Sunday. And this was like the perfect time to stay, not to leave. But he knew the Lord told him to start traveling as an evangelist. So he resigned. And he took, you know, me and my two other brothers on a road in a van for three years, going from hotel to hotel. And if you're a parent, you know that could be pretty Especially with three boys and most of the restaurants you're eating at is eating, you know, at restaurants. And so my dad's like, boys, you better behave before we go in here or the fear of the Lord's going to come upon you, you know. Is this okay? I'm just sharing. I feel like I'm supposed to share this. And he was an evangelist. And, and then he went from there and God told him to pastor a church. And I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, where he had pastored a church. For 12 years. And then one day, the Lord spoke to him, I want you to go start a church in Texas. So he resigned the church in Memphis. He started a church in Texas. And he's been there ever since. But I remember when he started the church in Texas, they started in the house. And when it was, I remember we had three or four people show up in our house. I was like, man, praise the Lord, revival. People are showing up. It's not just me and the family. Like, praise the Lord. I'm just saying, despise not the day of the small beginnings. And while he was traveling, and he was trying to raise money to help support this church plan, a doctor came up and said, the Lord spoke to me, I'm supposed to sow into your church. And he gave him a check for $50,000. And that's what got him through the first six months of planning the church. And being with him, I saw miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. They met in their house. They outgrew the house, went to a school. And one day, my dad got a phone call from another pastor in town. And he said, my wife has been having dreams about you and your church and your ministry. And I need to talk with you. And my dad's like, well, hey, I'm kind of busy this week. What about next week? He goes, no, I need to talk to you this week. So his ears perked up, like, okay, I think I need to be a part of this meeting. Well, this was an older pastor that essentially, he said, we just built this building, and our church is dying off, and the Lord gave my wife a dream that we're supposed to give this building to you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It was a million-dollar building they just built, and they paid it, and they gave it to my dad completely free. So when I say, when you trust the Holy Spirit and you obey him, I'm not just throwing out stories that I've heard from missionaries overseas. I'm talking about things that I'm living right now. I'm seeing right now. I was graced to believe that God can do what only God can do. I don't want to live off the crumbs of somebody else's testimonies. I want to see the Lord alive, work in my life and my family and doing what he called me to do. And I think there's just people that need to have an encounter with the Lord to discover their destiny. The Bible says that your life is like a vapor. You're going to breathe in and it's going to disappear. You don't have forever. You don't have forever. And what he said, Esther, he said, Esther, if you, I don't use your voice, I'm going to find somebody else. But one way or another, I'm going to save them. You and your family won't be saved, but I'll find somebody else to do it. The last thing I want to hear is the Lord say, Landon, do I need to find somebody else to do that? You know, when he called me and my wife to come to Wisconsin, we could have easily said, no, Lord, we're really happy in Texas. Both of our families live here. Our parents live in the same city. This is really nice. We're making good money. We could just stay here for the rest of our life. You know what he said? Okay, Landon, I'll just find somebody else. 
Wisconsin's going to have revival one way or the other. Do you want to be a part of it? Minnesota's going to be in revival one way or the other. Do you want to be a part of it? I just think the Lord's just looking for your yes. I just think he, you're just one encounter away from a life-changing word from the Lord. If anything tonight, I just pray that your faith gets stretched. Some of you might leave angry, and that's totally fine with me. Take it up with the Lord. God, why are you doing all this for them? What about me? That's a great question. Because he'll speak back to you. And he'll tell you exactly what you need to do. And some people, the fastest way to see doors open is you humble yourself before the Lord. And say, God, not my will, but your will be done. Forgive me for being stubborn. Forgive me for asking for prophetic words day after day when I haven't obeyed the last prophetic word that he gave me. I'm going to share one more story and then I'm done. Last year, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He gave me the phrase media revival. And he said, I want to use you to bring revival to media. And this has been on the back of my, my heart, my mind. And about a month ago, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, remember that media revival word I gave you? I said, yeah. He says, do I need to give that to somebody else? I said, no, sir. <laughs> no, please, Lord, no, sir. Has any God ever spoken to you like that before? He goes, okay, well, you need, to, you need to get started with this. So I said, Lord, show me what to do. And he connected me with an online course that I paid money for that I'm taking right now on how God can use me in social media. So it's like essentially I've gone back to college right now, learning how to do all this stuff to reach people online. But you know why I'm doing it? It's because the Lord told me to do it. The Lord told me to do it, and I want to be obedient. What is the Lord telling you to do? Can you stand with me? If we could get some music going. This is, what I, this is what I hear the Lord saying. This is the vision he gave me. Tonight, the altar will be your chair. I heard the Lord, I saw a picture of everybody kneeling down on a chair and saying, Holy Spirit, you speak to me personally. It's not going to come through Pastor Landon or Dr. Charles, or anybody else. You've got to learn to hear God's voice personally. So this is what I want to do. It's going to be an act and a sign of humility. If you can, if you're able to, I want you to turn around and kneel like you're kneeling in your seat. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit's going to speak to people tonight. Some of you just need to say, Holy Spirit, open my ears to hear your voice again. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Speak to me like you spoke to Moses at the burning bush. Speak to me like you spoke to Esther through Mordecai. Speak, Lord. Many of you, you're going to see visions. God's going to begin to show you things. Many of you, you're going to begin to hear his voice speak to you. And as he's speaking things to you, I want you to write them down. Find a piece of paper and a pen and write them down. Holy Spirit, right now, across this room, across this room, across this room.
start to forget all of the great things you did when did i throw away faith for the impossible how did i start to believe that you weren't sufficient for me why do i talk myself out of seeing miracles because you to deny what the Lord can do. It's easy for you. Now I see all that I have. Oh, I've got my confidence back. I put my trust in the the faith in the room, what the Lord can do, oh, what the Lord can do, it's going to happen, just let the way make it through, he's going to mow, yeah, he's going to mow, and can you imagine, with all of the faith in the room, what the Lord can do, what the Lord can do, and it's going to happen. Just let the way make her through. He's gonna mow, oh, he's gonna mow. And can you imagine, with all of the faith in the room, what the Lord can do, and what the Lord can do? It's gonna happen. Just let the way make her through. He's gonna mow, oh, he's gonna mow. Anything. Is possible. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Because anything is possible. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Because can you imagine with all of the faith in the room what the Lord can do? Oh, what the Lord can do. It's gonna happen. So just let the way make her through. He's gonna move. He's gonna move. Can you imagine? 
With all of the faith in the room, what the Lord can do, what the Lord can do, it's going to happen. Just let the way make us through. He's going to move. He's going to move. Can you imagine? With all of the faith in the room, what the Lord can do, and what the Lord can do. Just let the way make us through. He's gonna move, yeah. He's gonna move anything. Cause anything is possible. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? possible oh anything anything is possible anything is possible who am i to deny what the lord can do who am i to deny what the lord can do who am i to deny what the lord can do? you are more than able you are more than able and you are more than able seen how you were there's so much goodness and grace much more than I deserve cause I've come a long way oh yes I have and I've seen how you were there's so much goodness and grace much more than I deserve cause I know who I am and I can't stay where I'm at oh we've come this far by faith I just can't turn back yet cause he's not done with me not done with me yet. no no there's so much more to the story oh you're not done with me yet. you're not done with me yet. oh you're not done with me yet. there's so much more the Lord can do. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? What the Lord can do.
We, we so much appreciate Pastor Landon. How many do that tonight? Woo. I know there's a lot of things the Lord is saying. But I, I woke up from a dream this morning. And in, in that dream, I heard 2 Thessalonians chapter 5. And I believe verse 11. But the Lord began to speak to me from the whole chapter. And then he began taking me to other parts of the, of the Bible. And what I felt is the same thing I felt on my knees tonight. The Lord is helping you and I to break off some limitations. It's like we are stepping beyond the line of limitation. And it's like the brook can dry up. But the drying up of the brook, like it was with Elijah, was because God was preparing a new season of how he will provide for him. You also remember when the manna in the wilderness ended, the Lord was preparing a new season of crossing over the Jordan and going to the land of promise. You are literally stepping out of the old season into a new one. And the changes that are coming, the changes you are sensing, even the pains of birthing of a new season, they are just going to help you enter into a new level where there is no limits. And I want you to trust God through this. One of the things I'm hearing very clearly is that the Lord is going to cancel and remove debts. Yes, some of you believe in God for it. I'm actually believing God for the herb to be debt free. Last year we believed God for almost two million dollars. He provided. And um, we are like 2.6 million dollars away from being debt free. Imagine what we can do if we were debt free. <laughs> it's game on. Let's go. I say it's game on. But personally, I have not even a tiny doubt that this hub will be complete. Completely debt free. Yeah. Yeah. And it will happen by a miracle of God. People will see it. People will know it. And you know why we're going to be debt free? Because we are opening new hubs. And they are also going to be debt free.
But I felt to ask us tonight to step into faith for debt freedom. And I know it's risky to believe God for debt freedom, but what do you got to lose? And so, lift one hand and believe God with me right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy 28 says, we shall lead to many nations, but we shall not borrow. Romans tells us to owe nobody nothing but to love them. We declare we will owe nobody nothing but to love them. Lord, we are not slaves to the lender. So we declare we are not borrowers, we are lenders. We shall lend to many and not borrow. I speak debt freedom for the hub and debt freedom for this entire people watching and those in the room in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you supply to every need from the riches of your glory by Christ Jesus. I ask for supernatural faith of debt relief, debt cancellation, and debt repayment. I ask you for the grace to enter into Jubilee where debts are released. The year of release. The year of release. This is the year of Jubilee. This is the year of the favor of the Lord. So I pray out of the mountains, out of the hills, out of sources unknown, shall come the grace, the provision. Lord, I pray for supernatural ideas, supernatural relationships, supernatural strategies, supernatural favor. But I ask you, Father, that by a miracle of God, we shall see this year become a year of jubilee. Say jubilee. Come on, shout and say jubilee. I pray for businesses to blow out of water, to launch into the deep. I pray for even your people to have supernatural ways where they will enter into deep waters. That they will launch into the deep and there will be great fruit coming your way. Lord, activate the resources of heaven through the riches of your glory by Christ Jesus. Now, some of you right now, the Lord will call you to give a sacrifice like Isaac was given by Abraham. I don't know what he would do 
for your Isaac. I know what he is saying to me to do. I am believing God for debt freedom that our hands will be completely untied to move forward for harvest of souls. Let me tell you what he is showing me and Pastor Landon. Come here, Pastor. I think I, I want to do this handshake. Like what you told me in the office. You want to tell the people? Yeah. We were praying in his office, and I saw a vision of the state line of Minnesota and Wisconsin. And I saw my hand shaking his hand. And that there's going to be some sort of, obviously, kingdom partnership but there's going to be some sort of a revival that flows back and forth between the state lines. Thank you, Lord. And so, Lord, we say, let it be so. Let it be so that, God, these two states would see a massive outpouring like we've never seen before, Lord. Do what only you can do in Minnesota. Do what only you can do in Wisconsin, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. And you know, you don't even know this, but I, I had to tell you at the office area today, on Thursday, we are meeting with our team and we are beginning to mark Minnesota and we are identifying some cities where we are going to take revival Rochester Mankato St. Cloud Duluth Wilma Grand, Grand Rapids and many others, we're going to identify them. And, and there is like a heart cry. We have appointed a few state representatives already. And we are believing God to have more state representatives all over the state of Minnesota. So this handshake is really a partnership from the Lord to unite this whole region and set it on fire for God. And what happens in Wisconsin happens in Minnesota. What happens in Minnesota happens in Wisconsin. And we crossbreed both states and see what God will do, not only for these two states, but for the entire region a sound from the north. A sound from the north. Glory. Glory. Woo. But there is more to this. With the school, we're going to release people out of the school. We're going to plant other hubs. I say we're going to plant other revival hubs all across the entire city and the region. And so this is a combine harvester going across the entire region. And um, we are we are beginning to see all that and there's more I don't want to share more there's more but I don't want to share more but I'll give you a hint it's media we are unleashing the full force of media and we're gonna go all over media and we're gonna see what God will do through media we're gonna have a greater voice in the media than we've ever had before. And we're going to begin to shape the region through media. Amen.
we're going to saturate the whole region. And so you're going to begin to see a lot of things coming out from our platforms here. And uh, every person on our media team, God bless you. You are a part of a big harvest. A big harvest. More than you can imagine. Hallelujah. I'm going to share you with more of that in the future. Very near future. But media is a huge part of this. So tonight, I'm asking God to help you and I to go into a place of freedom from debt we've never gone in before. How many are ready for that? Completely unleashed. But here is the key. God is going to call you to do something you've never done before. God will call you to lay down an Isaac. An Isaac is something really precious to you. That you don't even want to let go of it. But God told Abraham to lay down Isaac. And when God had Abraham lay down Isaac, Isaac entered into, Isaac became a seed for a great harvest. And Abraham was able to become a father of a great nation out of that. This is not for everybody. And nobody will tell you what to do. But God will. And what God speaks to you to do, I want you to do it and do it right now. If God is asking of you to lay down an Isaac, I want you to come to the front and lay on this altar. And if you know what that Isaac is, for me I know it's a financial seed I need to lay on the altar. I want you to bring it and lay it on this altar. If, you have, if it is not a financial seed, if it's something else, I want you to come and still lay on this altar. But there is something God will do when you let go. He'll free the finances. He'll free the resources. He'll free you from debt. And I'm telling you within the next not very long, this whole thing, you're going to hear the miracle. It is done. It is done. And as it is being done, it's going to unleash faith for you and your family to enter into complete debt freedom. This is not for everybody. I'm not a financial manipulator. I don't do that. But I heard from the Lord and I want you to do as God leads you. Worship team, go ahead and worship. So I'll throw my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for
I got some envelopes here with me. And if the Lord is saying to you to lay down an Isaac, I want you to come and get an envelope from me and just do what he tells you to do. I believe that God is going to do some crazy miracles tonight. There are some people who have nothing and the little you have is your biggest sacrifice. And this will be the night when the whole destiny of your life changes and God puts you on a path to be a kingdom financier generations and generations to come. I know what I'm saying tonight and I believe that you are hearing God say something and you're saying yes. Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your soul, cause you've got a lion inside of the lungs, get up and praise the Lord. Come on my soul, oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your soul, cause you've got a If you have something to lay on the altar, just lay it off on the altar. Glory to God. Keep worshiping, people. Keep worshiping. Keep worshiping. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your soul. Because you've got a lion inside. Come on. 
I'm going to speak to this. Stretch your hands here. Father, this is our Isaac. We lay it all down. And we say, have your way. On these homes and businesses. These destinies here. Even those watching online that are giving up their Isaac tonight. And Father, we give it all. We give it all. And if you ask for more, we'll give it all. It all belongs to you, Lord. We give it all. We surrender it all. Father, do what you did with Abraham. You renewed your covenant with him. And you made him know that just as the stars of the sky and the sand of the seashore, that his generation shall be a multitude. Lord, we call this north and we say, let it come through as a harvest for the kingdom of God. Somali community, even the Muslims, and even those in dead religion are going to hear. And if there will be a blood washed upper Midwest and a blood washed America. There shall be. There shall be. Turn every dollar right now to a soldier of the king. That there shall be many that shall be raised up, even through the school of ministry. Dear Jesus. If you're here tonight and the Lord is calling you to the school of ministry and you're like, I want to be prepared as an army for God. And you're in this room tonight, you're saying, 
I don't even know how that looks like. I want you to walk to the front. This is not something we can do alone. God is raising an army. And he wants you to be part of that army. And you're saying, Lord, I hear that call. I don't even know how it means and what it means. I don't do this every, every Tuesday. But if you're hearing the call into ministry, the call to go deeper in the things of God, the call to say yes to where God is calling us, I want you to walk to the front right now. Maybe you don't even understand what it is. We'll explain more. We'll answer all your questions. But without even knowing details, you're just saying yes. Because saying yes is better than wanting to understand. Come on, give them a big God bless you. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming. Just keep saying yes, keep saying yes, keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming. Come on, give them a big God bless you. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. Glory. Let it be an army. Let it be a mighty army. Hallelujah. Now come closer. Tighten it up a little bit and come closer. And I want all anybody who is in second year or you've graduated from the school come and stand behind them anybody in the second year or you've graduated and Candice, Candice come to anybody who has either graduated or you're in the second year of the school come stand on the behind them hallelujah Jesus took 12 men. They were unschooled. They were ordinary men. He turned them into apostles. Disciples are not born. They are made. God is going to make you. He's going to make you. He's going to make you. The making is his to do. Yours is to say yes. He'll take you places you have never imagined possible. Stretch your hands toward these people. Father, I ask right now for an army that is prepared to go forth with you. And I pray tonight these wonderful soldiers that are saying yes you're going to turn their world around. You're going to set them on fire. And you're going to cause them to move into realms of victory that they have never experienced before. I pray tonight is a turning point. And I pray that they will be marked for eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to follow Candice. She is right behind you there. And um, Candice, you can go and share with them what the school is about, answer questions. You guys have an amazing weekend. We'll see you on Sunday for the return of prodigals. And also the youth, young adult night on Friday night. It will be amazing. But the rest of you follow Candice. God bless you. We love you. Have a good night. Thank you so much.